The meeting of the Plaquemines Parish Council, the sole governing authority of the, of the Plaquemines Port Harbor and Terminal District, is now called to order. We will have roll call. Let the record reflect that um, council members Newberry and Bartholomew uh, are absent. All rise for the prayer, Reverend Tyrone Edwards. O oh, the gracious and eternal God, we thank you for your traveling grace to come to this building. God, we ask your church's blessing upon this meeting. God, we thank you for all of our directors to God. We ask a special blessing upon Executive Director Sanders and all upon the God, and we pray that this pool become an economic blessing for all the citizens of Plaquemine Parish. We ask a special blessing upon our parish president, Mr. Lapine, that God continue to give him the vision uh, that would help this parish go forward. We ask these and all of the blessing in the powerful name of Jesus the Christ and all the saints of God say it, amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Welcome, everyone. Miss um, Newberry is uh, having a, say it again, Barbara, she's waiting for someone else to have a baby. She's waiting to become a grandmother. Oh, yeah, that's true. That's true. The grandmother thing which is not uh, in Webster's dictionary because you can't really explain how good that feels. So she's not here. And Mr. Mytholomy, uh, for those who are unaware, he had, went and got him a new knee. So he's not moving too well. And he said he hates physical therapists. And I can understand why. They're bending his knee where they don't want to bend. So he won't be here today. Um, he sends his wishes. We'll move to item two, executive session. So offered. What am I missing? Receipt and discussion of attorney-client privilege communications in regard to potential legal issues as pertains to Plaquemines Port Harbor and Terminal District, its creation and governance, Louisiana Constitution, LRS 42 colon 17 A10, attorneys J. Kendall Rathburn and Danny Garrett, council member Gooey. I'll move and ask for a second. Seconded by uh, Council Member Black. Machine is open. I got you, Carlton. Yeah, it uh, approved 7 0. At uh, 106, we'll move into executive session. Council members and uh, Mr. Radburn and Mr. Garrett. Port Commission has come out of executive session having uh, made no final or binding um, agreements. We'll move to item three, status report by the executive port director. General. Good afternoon, Mr. President, Mr. Vice Chairman, and members of the board. I am Sandy Sanders, executive director of Plaquemines Port Harbor and Terminal District, and follows as my executive director's report for the reporting period of 25 January to 27 February. During this time frame, we met with the principals of Venture Global and invited them to visit and provide an update on their project. They informed us of the progress with the FERC and their commercialization process, which is, has been outstanding. As a result, their initial intent of exporting 20 million tons per year of liquid natural gas could be increased drastically. David Vitter arranged for a meeting with the Assistant Secretary of the Army at the Pentagon, and we briefed him on the POT and the progress with the container terminal development and the rail to both projects. We also informed him that we briefed Alex Hergott, Executive Director of the Federal Permitting Innovation Steering Council. Uh, Mr. Hergott's uh, 
permitting innovation plan is to place the permitting process on steroids. <clears throat> the, um, it is, has been dubbed FAST 41. He walked us through the uh, pre-fin filing, which is their dashboard application, and their goal is to fully permit in 24 months of huge jumbo projects. Lastly, we were invited to present the port projects to the Crescent Pilots at their quarterly board meeting. They were very enthusiastic, obviously, with the increased uh, vessel traffic that the VG and the PLT projects would uh, enhance. Uh, the Crescent Pilots have assisted us tremendously with giving us some preliminary looks at our projects and offering assistance where it is needed. That's my report. Hope everyone has a happy and safe Mardi Gras. Mr. Chairman, subject to your comments and questions, this concludes my brief. Mr. Vice Chairman. Anyone for council? Any questions for uh, the general? Anyone? Audience? Thank you, sir. Move to item four, bids and advertisements. There are none. Introduction of ordinances and resolutions. I'll start with Council Member Arbor. I have one, a resolution authorizing and directed, directing Maynard Sanders, Executive Director of the Plaquemines Port Harbor Terminal District, to have the Port's Legal Counsel file a petition seeking a final declaratory judgment from the appropriate court as to the legal source of the Port's jurisdiction, organizational, and governance authority and whether such source emanates from the Louisiana Constitution and LARS 34-1351 or from the Plaquemines Parish Charter for Self-Government. Mr. Roussel. In order to amend and as amended readopt Rule 1 in Chapter 1 of Section 2-18 of the Code of Ordinances for Plaquemines Parish relative to the Plaquemines Port Harbor Terminal District and otherwise provide respect thereto. Bye. Mr. Franz. Move on to item six, ordinances and resolutions on second reading and final passage. 6A. An ordinance to approving, authorizing, and directing Maynard Sanders, executive director of the Plaquemines Port Harbor and Terminal District, to purchase certain land owned by Woodland Bar Pits LLC, and which is desirable for the continued development of PPHTD and otherwise provide with respect thereto. Mr. Franz? I offer for discussion. I'll second. Uh, anyone from the Port Administration like to uh, explain <coughs> item 6A1? Yes, this involves uh, purchasing a radio tower that is located, uh, a communications tower that is uh, located on um, <coughs> the east side of Highway 23, uh, pretty close to the Woodlands property. Uh, it is uh, about five acres. Uh, in size. Uh, it was not a high priority with the port. Uh, however, um, another seller has, has uh, talked to the owner, another buyer has talked to the owner, and it has forced us to, to make a move. When I say make a move, uh, this tower would be in pretty much uh, centrally located where the container terminal is proposed to be. Uh, in talking with, and I've uh, briefed uh, at AAPA meetings uh, by members of the FBI, that communications towers, telecommunications towers, and ports are rapidly becoming the number one terrorist target in our country. I uh, do not think we can afford to have someone other than the port own this tower, particularly where it's located in our uh, area. I am sure uh, everyone saw um, the email that our tax assessor, Belinda Hazel, sent. I did contact her before the meeting. Uh, I explained to her that this was only five acres uh, and the, the, uh, the purchasing price is $120,000, which probably equates to 700 plus or minus dollars uh, in lost revenue to the tax assessor. Um, 
But let me tell you, when you're going to build a port, you're going to take land off the rolls. That's just a fact of life. And if we're going to build a port, and I think we are, that's going to happen. But the amount of money that would be generated from that port being there is more than going to be offset by what we lose. So I think in, in light of the tower, and we're going to have to have a tower uh, there, uh, so it is, uh, it's best that we get a, um, a tower that has been depreciated. Uh, we have checked it out structurally. It's very sound. And the purchase price for the land is in concert with um, previous uh, land analysis. So uh, uh, the port is prepared to purchase this tower. There is a representative from the seller here today that has told us that if y'all don't buy it, they are going to sell it to the person who is waiting. So uh, I'll stand by for questions for more discussion. I have one. Yes, sir. If we don't have, if we don't purchase the tower and the property, are we uh, going to have to look at doing that sometime in the future for our port operations? We are going to have to have a tower, okay. probably more than one. Uh, and uh, this tower also has um, sublets on it, so those contracts would roll to the port. Huh? They terminated. Okay. All right. Um, the so. potential is there, though, to sublet it out. Yes, sir. Right now, yes, sir. None. But and, um, uh, yes, sir. We are going to have to have a tower. And telecommunications is going to be very vital to the port. So the the, the total price is one hundred and twenty thousand. That is correct. And have you estimated what it would cost if we have to build another tower, or when we have to build another tower at another location? I think it'd be well over two hundred. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes. Uh, Mr. Patrick Egan is the one that prepared the, the actual appraisal for this property, and he did depreciate the cell tower because it's been there quite a while, but it's been maintained very well. Uh, I made copies of the appraisal for, every, for each council member, but the appraised value is 125000 and then he goes into if it were brand new, and it's a lot more, and he, he, it runs through that with, with this appraisal. Uh, you say how much it, more? Uh, yeah, I, I, forgive me that I don't have that right in front of me. I was focusing on the uh, appraised value. Um, I could find that number if you if you just give me a little time. Let's, but let's, while you're doing that, any one of the council members have any questions? Mr. So, the, so you have an engineering uh, opinion on the tower? Yeah, that's right. The structural sound tower. No, sir. Sir. Uh, the, the, what the, the, the appraiser did go out and inspect it, but he is not an engineer. I, I want to quickly add that. But they, they did go out and look at it, and, and they brought with them, according to the, the appraisal, someone who was familiar with cell phone, uh, cell phone type of towers. But I, did, I don't see in here, to answer your question, Mr. Roussel, that he was an engineer. And it was two hundred thousand dollars for the replacement only of the tower. So not it's the property. The, that's not the property. The property is is, is valued the, at yeah at the uh, fi at sixty thousand. Uh, oh, just under sixty thousand. But the yeah and the total amount with the property and the cell tower as it is currently the condition it is in is one hundred twenty-five thousand. And let me. This brings up a point. Mr. Egan is on the pat on the port payroll, sir. He's contract. He's contracted with the port. Correct. Out. And he was contracted out about five years ago to buy and work on uh, purchasing piano keys properties. Yes, sir. Have we purchased any yet? No, sir. We have devised a plan to purchase those keys, uh, but our um, and we have a sequence. Uh, to purchase those keys and we can set up meetings with y'all to describe that plan in depth well when I saw this you know I was wondering why we have not jumped on some of the piano keys right now we're jumping on this tower and that, that's the question that comes to mind that you know five years ago when we did hire Mr. Egan the uh, the attempt was to acquire the, the keys before you know they became more valuable and more valuable and we have done not done that. So, you know, 
Mr. Roussel, you're, you're right. Uh, the monies that have been collected from Venture Global as the advance rents were going to be used to purchase those properties. And I uh, was being uh, a little bit cautious and prudent, wanted to make sure that Venture Global got all their property, and we still are at the B3 uh, impasse that is being permitted. Uh, so that was my delay. Uh, but as I say, this tower is, is going to be sold, and so it has put a little fire under my fanny to go out and purchase it now, get out in front of it. We have a, uh, a new director in the administration. I had asked him if he would take a look at the tower. Mr. Helmers, who uh, was in the communication business for quite a long time, I think that a second opinion from Mr. Helmer would be worthy to see if, where the location, if it's even uh, worthy of purchase. Because you don't have any studies to show where we're going to be needing towers. We do have towers in the area already. And I just thought that... Uh, Mentioning it to him might be a good idea because we do have towers in the area. The port does not have a tower. The port's going to need a tower in that proximity where we have proposed where our operations building is going to be. And uh, the like government say, has a tower. We're going to, sir? The government has a tower. The port does not have a tower. There we go again. Okay. My, my point is, is that. If the port and the, and the government have a tower next door, maybe for economy of scale, we can use the same tower? Just my point. Well, as I stated, I do not believe the port can have someone else own this tower in within the port campus uh, okay. due to obvious reasons, as I stated, with uh, the FBI assessment that ports and telecommunications equipment are the number one terrorist targets in America. Mr. Convict? You said it was in the middle of uh, where you want to have the porch. You got agreements with all the other property owners from there to the port property now? We're, we're working that. So if, right one of them, if one of them doesn't agree, then somebody's in the middle of our property. Well, uh, you're right. They'll be right in the middle of a port. Right in the middle of an um, industrial area. Anyone else? <clears throat> Mr. Blake? Sure. Um, so in regard to the piano key lots that are, that are for sale, I've been noticing uh, some of those owners are putting up wooden for sale signs. And uh, yeah, I wanted to ask more or less the same thing as Council Member Kogginovich. Have there been any purchase agreements and, you know, how much are we paying Mr. Egan um, when, you know, there's developments that like that that are happening. He has a task at hand and, you know, these things aren't being handled. Uh, we have a contract with Mr. Egan uh, for a set amount per hour. Um, so he's not paid a commission. He is paid by us on an on a hourly rate. Uh, we do have a plan of attack to purchase the, the properties. And uh, I'd be glad to share that with y'all uh, in your offices. And, sure. and before Mr. Conrad, uh the piano keys have been an integral part of the plan. Yes, sir. And uh, for the clarification of any commissioners or the audience, should um, fair market value be presented to landowner A and he refuses what are the options well yeah go ahead uh, Dr. Gooey if after a good faith effort to negotiate we were unable to uh, have the landowner purchase we're talking about the piano keys only right now well I, I know I'm, I'm, I'm allowing some expansion because yeah. uh, there was a direct relationship to the ordinance. But yeah, we're, we're talking about the piano. Okay, with, with it being limited, the discussion limited to the piano keys, uh, the, the, some of the council members will recall a couple of years ago, we had to expropriate some property when we attempted to purchase it. Uh, it was referred to as track B-1, and we successfully did so. 
that's a last option because you don't ever want to simply expropriate property from private citizens but if the council as the governing authority for sole governing authority for the port made the decision that it was for a, a valid public purpose as they did for track b1 then there is legal authority to go expropriate that property thank you i thought it's important for everyone to understand that Mr. Congress? you also said that you was gonna use the future rent that venture global has been paying to buy the piano keys how can we do that unless no i have um i'm sorry go ahead I mean, I'm, I'm, unless yeah. venture global gets everything and starts billing if they don't we got to give that future rent back right the advanced rent but not the options so we do have a plan uh for the properties prior to that happening and i'll be happy to share that with y'all another day anything else mr lafront you you have i just want to say uh you said you had a handout for us oh yes sir i apologize Of course. That's in addition to the, the other documents that were sent. Can we do that so we have a few minutes? We only, we only I apologize. There was a, a packet sent, I believe, to the, the council members when this was initially introduced, which showed the survey and the property pictures and, and, and the size of it, et cetera. And this is. This is the appraisal that came in at $125,000. Mr. Chairman? Yes. Can I ask for a five minute break so us to look over this? Five minutes. I'm asking you. Oh, you're asking me. I don't know. I'll have to ask. I know the West Bank, we give them the table. Yeah. Y'all not filled up yet? I think we got 28 tables sold. Mr. LaFrance, your wishes? Yeah, been trying to get money. Can't find it nowhere. <laughs> I was yes, sir. It from a road project, but he took it already. Yes. Uh, Mr. LaFrance, if, uh, if, if, if we're going to move on this, we have some blanks to fill in. Okay. Uh, so I'll withdraw my second, and we'll fill in those blanks, and if you're going to move on it, I'll. Okay. You have to move forward to uh, to vote, not for discussion. You're removing your second for discussion. For discussion, right? And then, and then, if you're going to move on it, we need to fill in the blanks at um, line 23, and then offer it. You have those numbers, uh, Sandy? The 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 um, track, the township range. Okay. Anytime you're ready. Right. I apologize. So the, the, the track, the legal description of the track is attached as Exhibit A. And the, on line 23, the actual, uh, as reflected in the appraisal for track blank in township blank south, et cetera, should be stricken because reference should be made to Exhibit A. That's where the legal description is and the, the blanks are my fault that was a placeholder while we got the legal description and we put it in as exhibit a so mr. LaFrance you want to get that um, that change made before you introduce it 
Mr. Yep. Rathburn, if you'll if you do us the honor, just give us the language on the line and sure. what do we do. Sure. Um, on, as, on line 23, um, it would be in, uh, as reflected in Exhibit A attached to this ordinance, period, and strike out the remaining part on 23 and 24. So we scratch out from the word the on page 23 and then all the way into its entirety to number 24 and the language would be uh, in Exhibit A attached to this order. Exactly. And I apologize for that oversight. And uh, I've had a suggestion that uh, we add currently owned by Woolen Borrow Pit. Um, that's on line 16, Benny? Yeah. Line 24. Oh. Which line? Okay, on line 24, we, we had said to in, in its entirety, oh. but should we okay. leave in sure. currently owned? Sure. Yeah. No, it, it could. That. that Sure, it Got is that. currently okay. owned by Woodland Borough Pits LLC. That is correct, and that could stay you in the well. Got that, Mr. LaFrance? We're going to, yeah, okay. You all right, Emma? You offer? I so offer. Actually, I'll, I'll second. I'll second. Yeah, I have a couple just uh, questions for clarification, real quick. Um, this particular property, when we talk about parcels one, two, three, four, and five, which parcel does it fall within? Okay. It is, has, is this the only property we purchased between four, five, and six thus far? That is correct. Okay. Um, and for some reason, if the Venture Global 1, 2, and 3 uh, happens not to reach FID and we revert back to using those parcels for port development, would there be an alternative? to use this tower, maybe for commercial leases, et cetera, yes. to maybe recoup our money from this transaction? That is true. We can do that. But again, the long-range plan would be to, to use this. Yeah, tower. I get the long-range okay. plan. I'm just talking about the, the alternative in case yes. The, yes, sir. there's no FID with VG. All right, that's, that's Anyone that else that. at the table? Congress? Who does the house behind it belong to? And is that I don't have that at my fingertips. But we do have all the owners of the houses on those areas. Is, is, it's on the same piece of property, ain't it? Sir? Well, it might be a separate property, but it's right behind it. So, it, Yeah, it is a separate property. Anyone else? Audience? Property up for sale. Uh, the first thing we decided to do was talk to the poor just to see if they may have interest. And they said, you know, somewhere down the road we may, but they didn't have interest at that time. So anyway, uh, Subsequent to that, a buyer came to us and they're ready to buy the, the, the tower. So before we sold it to them, we went back to the port to say, look, we have a buyer that's interested in the property. We, in the past, said that y'all were interested in it. We're going to see if y'all still want it. If y'all do, we'll let y'all buy it first before we sell it to, the, to this individual. So that's where this came from today. Um, with regards to the tower, uh, I mean, the tower is all galvanized. Everything's galvanized. And when we, you know, when we have the light up top replaced, you know, we have the people that climbed the tower, we have them inspect and looked at it up there, and they said there's no rust, there's no issues that they see with the tower whatsoever. Um, if you have any questions, I'm glad to answer. Any further questions? I have a question. Wait, here we go. 
uh, it was mentioned earlier that the uh, users got off of the tower and canceled the contracts. Do you know why they did that? Um, when we actually bought the tower, there was no users on it. Uh, they had already uh, taken off. It was used for telecommunications with offshore r uh, rigs and stuff like that, microwave towers. Uh, when we bought it, there was no tenants on it. The two antennas that you see on top of it right now, they're just sitting there. There's nobody, uh, no, no current tenants on the tower. So it hadn't had any users for quite some time? That's correct. I, I do have one question to Mr. Helmer. He Mr. Helmer, are you familiar with the tower? Uh, I am familiar with the location. you have any comments on it? Uh, Come to the mic. Okay. Yeah. Based on what I know about the tower, um, it's in a great location. I understand the, the part of the port's concern of security and what's going to be broadcasted on there. But as far as the value of the land and a tower, I think it's a good buy. Um, that tower would be probably twice the cost, if not three times, to put something like that up again and have it structurally secured. And it, and it will be available. Um, they may be able to lease it if, you know, until they use it. They may be able to get some short-term usage out of it. But it's, uh, it's at that price of, if I understood right, 120000 mm -hmm. that's a that's a that's total. a good deal total. Yeah. That's land and everything. That's a good deal. Thank you. So uh, <clears throat> can we uh, anticipate you going tomorrow and climbing up there and doing your inspection? <laughs> <laughs> and, and the other thing I want to point out, you know, the tower's right there by the river. I'm sure one of the things that they'll port will probably want to do is put a camera up there where they can look at the river, they can look at their property and see everything that's going on. The other tower that's way in the back, you know, you can't put a, t a, a camera system up top there and watch that river. Um, I think that's about all I got. Thank you. Anyone else from the council? The audience? <laughs> sometimes, you, sometimes the colonel and I have some disagreement, but I'm going to agree with him on this one. It, it could be a money maker one way or another. So it's to make the portal better. I'm with you. Okay. Anyone else? Sheen is open. And the ordinance is approved seven to nothing. We move to item six B. Withdrawn. We'll so item six B is withdrawn. Mr. Francie. A resolution adopting the amendments to the Plaquemines Port Harbor and Terminal Districts Accounting Policies and Procedures Manual. Defer. We'll move to item six D. A resolution approving and authorizing John Bartholomew, Port Chairman, Maynard J. Sanders, Port Executive Director, and Shamboro Riley Williams, Port Comptroller, to execute a Louisiana Compliance Questionnaire to Counter and Company CPAs and otherwise to provide with respect thereto. Commissioner Lafonce. So offered. There a second? I'll second. Mr. Any discussion from the table? Board administration, audience, Gene is open. And the uh, ordinance is approved, 7 to 0. We'll move to item 6E. A resolution authorizing Maynard J. Sandy Sanders, Executive Director of the Plaquemines Port Harbor and Terminal District, to enter into an agreement for information technology services with Intelligent Transportation Systems, LLC, for the provision of IT services and otherwise to provide with respect thereto. Commissioner LaFrance. So offered. Is there a second? I'll second. Any questions from the table? 
I'd like an explanation it would be good from the floor. Yes, commissioners, this is a firm that we have decided to go with as we have moved on from our uh, previous IT company, Aries. Uh, we recognize there are certain deficiencies and concerns with our previous uh, service provider. And so we decided to look for a new one for the, for the new year. And uh, IT services who has, is on the state, uh, state <coughs> bid list, we decided to move forward with them as uh, they were referred by other ports in the area. We've, we've, we've had a good relationship with them in, in fixing some of the issues that the previous service provider did not handle. And so moving forward, we will be moving on a time and material basis with them uh, for one year. We're, we're wanting to see almost in this one year trial, uh, trial if they're gonna be the best fit for us. Uh, and, and in doing so in time and materials, if there is certain equipment uh, that they will need to purchase, we are not gonna allow them to add it on to their costs. We're just gonna pay for the equipment ourselves and say, okay, move forward with your services to, to get it done. So they will handle the office and they will also handle the services out in the field, uh, working with the, the gentlemen on the vessels, uh, with the cameras uh, overlooking the river as well. So we're anticipating a good relationship with the service provider. And if it doesn't work out so well, we will uh, look for another one next year. I think the benefits of this one compared to the last one is that the last one uh, was headquartered in Virginia. Whereas this one is headquartered in Louisiana, we have them on the a text. We can get in, in touch with them anytime. They have people locally working um, and coming to our office within uh, minutes as opposed to days. Uh, so we feel very comfortable with what we're doing uh, right now. So we just ask for your approval. Thank you. Um, council members, any questions? Anyone? Audience, any questions? Sheen is open. <coughs> and the resolution is approved seven to zero. Um, inadvertently, uh, well, first of all, I'd like to move back to item three under status report for the executive court director. Um, Sandy, I see Eric in the audience. Did you want to introduce Eric to make any comments? I didn't mean to bypass that. Just make it quick. For you new council members, this is Eric Sundstrom. He's our our hired gun up there in Baton Rouge. He's been with the port. Uh, he was here before I got here. He's done a great job for the port. Um, and um, Eric, great. Thanks. Thank you, Sandy. Uh, thank you, Mr. Vice Chair and uh, members. I know I've had the opportunity to meet with uh, quite a few of y'all. I am, as Sandy said, the um, lobbyist for the Port Harbor and Terminal District. Uh, representing y'all in Baton Rouge, uh, have been here um, since about 2008, I believe, at least over 10 years. Um, look forward to working with the new council. If there's anything, uh, I know y'all have received quite a few of my emails uh, since you've been elected. Uh, if there's anything y'all need, feel free to give me a call. Um, my number is on those uh, emails. Um, as session approaches, you'll start getting uh, some reports on legislation that has been filed. That is, uh, I break it down in uh, usually about two to three categories, uh, specifically to the port, uh, then generally to ports statewide. And then I also include some parish issues I work very closely with Representative Leopold and Garofalo, Senator Hewitt, and uh, Senator Troy Carter, who all touch Plaquemines Parish. Um, so you'll get, uh, on Friday, you'll get status reports on the legislation that I'm tracking, where it is, and uh, you'll also get a, what I call an end of session, or an end of week report, which will discuss everything that happen during the session. Uh, it may or may not involve the, uh, the port specifically, but it'll be things that are going on that you may have an interest in. If there's any questions, I'll take any them Any questions out. from any of the members? 
Mr. I would Chairman. like to comment that, Eric, uh, I know we've worked together for years, and uh, I've always appreciated it. Almost when it. you had hair. <laughs> no, I didn't have hair then either. <laughs> it might have been a little different color. I had 20 less pounds, for sure. <laughs> And uh, we've always uh, communicated well, and, and I know you do that. That's just your style. And, yes. Uh, just from me personally, I appreciate it because you've kept me up to date on, on all the issues. My pleasure. Yeah. Mr. Chairman, I'd also like to uh, sing a song of appreciation for Mr. Sundstrom as he and I have been working closely together over the last year and a half that I've been here um, directly communicating between him and the port. And I can say that he is very involved in, in different aspects uh, and Baton Rouge regarding uh, port issues. And so uh, we also have him attending every Port Association of Louisiana meeting. So he's highly involved uh, in those meetings and others. And so we're very appreciative of the work uh, Mrs. Sundstrom is doing for the port. Okay. Thanks for having me. Good, Eric. Thank you so much. Move to item 7A, introduction of resolutions. Uh, there are none. And move to item eight, approval of the January 24, 2019 meeting minutes. Uh, I'll move for approval. Get a second. Second by uh, Mr. Roussel. Machine is open. <laughs> and uh, Mr. Roussel and I both agree that we'll adjourn uh, at uh, three uh, two thirty-two. Yeah, uh, Mr. Russo, I'll move back. Yeah, second. Uh